So, you've been waiting for this. This is my David Montgomery experiment. Um, David is the running back for the Chicago Bears. Uh, I trained Thomas Ives since his junior year in high school. Thomas played football and basketball at Hinsdale Central, then went and played at Colgate, had a phenomenal career at Colgate, uh, and has been on the Bears practice squad two years in a row as an undrafted free agent. Uh, you may have seen him this summer on Tony Holler's Instagram. He jumped 41 inches, vertical jump. Pretty spectacular for someone that's six foot five. So David and Thomas were roommates their rookie year at camp. So they became close friends. David played football at Iowa State. Um, he was a really good high school running back. And just for a TFC pub, things you don't know about David Montgomery is he was an all-state shot putter, an all-state disc thrower, and he ran on his high school's 4x1, 4x2 team, which were both all-state. So he was a four-sport all-state athlete in track and field his senior year in high school. Also an Eagle Scout, actually a phenomenal story for a phenomenal young man. Um, so here is what we know about David from the Combine. Or six eight. This is a big one. I, I'm anxious to see this number because I love David Montgomery as a player. Top speed is the only question. There, there you go. But he is <laughs> the white flag and, 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 and waved it. Went we, to the sideline. In, in the running back, when we call those guys, they're like wine. They just get better with time. Get better with time. Yeah, that's it. Just David, keep giving them the ball. David Montgomery, a four six four. So David's four six four cost him about a million dollars. Because uh, it dropped him four rounds in the draft. Um, I think he led the, the college football with yards after contact. And he'll tell you he's not a power back. He is a make-you-miss guy. And I, and I agree with him. I just like to give him crap that he's a contact guy. He gets really pissed. So when Thomas brings him by, this is his first night. So he runs... He doesn't use his hips at all. He's got really powerful legs. He can generate power like you would not believe doing a, a single leg squat for speed, like uh, you know, using the gym aware stuff. I mean, most powerful person I've ever seen. But he doesn't get his hips into his runs, which is why he ran 4.64, and I'm going to guess 4.7 when he came here. I know when he showed up here in a 20-meter run on the 1080, he ran 3.21. I do 20 meters because if you know my driveway, I have 20 meters flat, then there is an incline, and then another flat 25 meters. And if the 25 meters takes you out in the street, and I have big trees, and you can't see cars coming. So it's only safe if we do 20 meters, especially with an NFL, a million dollar NFL athlete. I don't want him to get hit by a car. I would be uh, the next evil guy on social media. But that's David coming through, and I'll play it at real time here so you can see his speed. So decent. Yeah, he, to me, he looked 4'7". So we went through a series of drills, which I'm going to share with you in a second, but I just want to show you the changes. Um, the first couple of times we ran, he kept turning his head to the left, and I'm thinking, is that some kind of neurologic thing where he keeps switching his head to his left? And I asked him, I said, David, why do you keep looking left? And he goes, I'm looking at the reflection in the, my reflection in the cars to see what I look like. I said, you don't have to do that. I'll go get my camera and I'll film you. So we filmed all the sprints. So this is about midway through the summer. He's starting to cook here. And if we're going to look at his split, if we're looking at Ken Clark's stuff, we can really see that he is really starting to use his hips and snap that leg down and create a ton of pressure, a ton of force as he's coming through. And then right before he goes to camp, this is a crazy workout because there were three guys, his roommate in college, Deshante, is a wide receiver, and Thomas and David all started competing uh, to try and set new records on the 1080 with what we were doing. But I got him sprinting right before he left. And so when we see him come through, we're going to see, again, this much better hip action and more, much more T-force than what he had when he started. 
and it was noticeable. Even the newspapers wrote about how much faster he looked. Um, and it was great. Um, so how did we knock off all that we did religiously? Uh, bent knee, resisted bent knee prime times from a vertical stance. Now, I didn't get any of that on film, but basically he would stand up straight with the 1080 around his waist, kind of like you see Marshall doing here, and we did bent knee prime times from an acceleration stance. And, and not bent over, but completely vertical. And the reason why we did that is he had to use hip flexion in order to go forward. There was no other way to get him to move other than to move his hips and move his hips forward. And that became the what we did every workout. <laughs> And so I know I say, well, if you do the same workout every time, uh, you're not challenging your athlete. We did. So what we would do is we would attach the 1080 to different body parts. It might be his left shoulder. It might be his right shoulder. It might be around the middle of his back. It might be through a thigh. So basically, as an NFL running back, you've got to learn to keep that hip drive after contact. We always attach the 1080 to different body parts when he drove out. So it was basically a different uh, exercise every time. But the end game was that he had to get his hips to move, which is what he was missing when he first came here. Here's another one. That's a straight leg. And we also did some straight leg stuff. One time we even put him on the, in the kick bike. Uh, again, you've got to, with on high loads on the 1080, you've really got to bring that hip forward and snap that leg through on the kick bike. So here was his numbers on his first workout. Uh, his 20 meter was actually, it wasn't 320, it was 324 at a peak velocity of 8.56 meters a second at the 20 meter mark, which was 19.14 miles an hour, which is decent. Uh, power output was 202 watts. On his last workout, when we were going crazy, Ashley Thomas set the record of three flat 20 meters. That's fast. Um, he had a peak velocity of 9.07 meters a second, which was 20.2 meters, miles per hour, with an output of 277 watts. Now, David was interesting, because if I put him in the weight room and I got him any stronger, I don't know if that would do anything. He was already incredibly strong. His numbers on the gym aware were phenomenal. I've never seen anything like it before, and I've had some pretty powerful people. But what he missed was that hip drive. And once we dealt with that hip issue, we're going to have these huge improvements. And I know it's just one exercise that did it, but we kept charting everything every week, and we saw things drop every single week. And he would come back from wherever he went. Sometimes he'd go down in Texas to train or these different places. And I'd, he'd come back, and i said, David, how are you feeling? He goes, man, I feel fast. And even Thomas and Deshante were coming back saying, he looks really fast when he plays. So why change the workout completely if he's continuing to improve for the eight weeks that David came and worked out with me? And so again, we're working the, the, the hip action. And if you can get those hips to work, you're going to get a better whip. I think Franz Bosch's whip from the hip is a perfect way to describe it. Um, unfortunately, most kids don't understand how to whip works anymore, so I don't know how appropriate it is to tell your high school people, too bad there's not a, a TikTok that explains a hip, then they would all get it. Uh, so that's what we did. And so then you're going to ask, some people say, why do, bent, why do straight legs and when do you do bent knee? Well, I do straight legs with my beginners. And the reason why is most beginners can't get their foot even close to underneath their body. So we start with straight leg sprints. We do prime times. Because if you try to heel jam or something in a straight leg sprint, you're going to trip, break your leg, something like that. It's just a way to get you to understand where your body is. Once you get that down and you can sprint fairly well, then I'm going to switch to a bent knee. And we're going to stand that for a while. But then I'm going to go back to a straight leg because once I get this hip action, I actually want to increase 
the load on my hips when I scissor those legs, and I do that by straightening my leg. The lever becomes longer, and then it becomes a more difficult exercise because the weight has changed. So it's really kind of a cyclical thing to go back and forth between the two. And again, you can just watch your athletes and figure out when you want to make that change. But like I said earlier, this bent knee prime time has become um, a well, something I do every workout in one fashion or another.